Okay, hi there, welcome to this short video uh, for students looking at microeconomics. We're going to spend a few minutes looking at the rise to prominence of platform businesses. Now, a platform business operates a model that basically tries to facilitate uh, inter interactions across a really large number of buyers and sellers. And digital platforms of different types are becoming much more common and increasingly powerful in markets across many sectors and in many countries. A good example of a platform business is an aggregation platform such as Amazon, which aggregates, brings together products from upstream, including food producers these days, obviously DVDs and books and publishers. That merchandise is held in those vast warehouses uh, that you see across the country these days. Um, it's marketed by Amazon's digital storefront and then sold by Amazon to downstream customers, you and I, through a very efficient and incredibly scaled fulfillment platform. Of course, you'll be familiar with digital social platforms, including WhatsApp and Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, etc., where you know, millions of users uh, log on to platform services, streamed video and, and other, other aspects. And many of the platform ideas including, for example, the growth of e-gaming and uh, e-sports uh, platforms such as Peloton, uh, which is a sort of home workout for cyclists. Indeed, that, that Peloton has struggled to meet demand. I think something like three, 3 million members now of Peloton globally at the end of June 2020. Uh, as people switching, with gyms being closed and things, people switching towards home, home exercise. My own favourite is a platform for cyclists called Zwift, shown in the graphic there. Now, one of the key features of a platform business is economies of scale. What that means is the more users you have, essentially the users represent the output of the business, the more users you have, the unit cost or the average cost of uh, supplying the platform goes down. So this little graphic shows that if you move from 1 million to 5 million, maybe to 20 million users, the unit cost of production goes down, in part because most of the costs of establishing the platform, the fixed costs of software engineering and getting the cloud computing infrastructure into place, most of those costs are fixed. Fixed. They don't really change much initially. Development costs are pretty much upfront, for example. But the marginal cost of adding one extra user to the platform is very low. It could be even close to zero. If the marginal cost is low, the unit cost falls as more people add to the network. And there's also something called network effects. This is where the addition of new users to TikTok or WhatsApp, for example, that increases the value or the benefit of the platform to existing users. So this is the essential characteristic of a platform business. And perhaps the prime example of this is the communications app Zoom, which is clearly a major beneficiary of millions of people having to work and study from home during the pandemic. This chart shows the average daily number of people in the UK, just the UK, logging onto Zoom services, climbing from about 80,000 approximately in the middle of March 2020, uh, to a peak of what closing on 800,000 in the middle of May 2020. Not, not, not every user of Zoom is a customer. Uh, many use the platform for free, but Zoom licenses obviously the technology and there are corporate subscriptions and Zoom generated 190 million in total revenue during the fourth quarter, the last quarter of 2020. And look what's expected to happen in the first and second quarters of 2021, uh, with revenue at the end of summer of 2021 expected to be nearly 10 times what it was at the start of 2019. The price of Zoom shares traded on the Nasdaq stock market in the United States jumped from about $73 per share in January 2020 to over $250 per share in the first week of June 2020. There has been some decline in both daily usage of Zoom and also the share price since you know, people have been going back to work and back to school. But Zoom is a great example of a business that's clearly benefited 
from the pandemic. But not every platform business has experienced the same gains from the coronavirus pandemic. For example, the number of the, the ride-sharing app Uber's active users worldwide actually fell in the first half of 2020. Again, that's the immediate result of stay-at-home orders and a steep decline in usage from the retail hospitality sectors, pubs and clubs closing. However, what Uber's done, of course, is they fast become, they've diversified. So they're, they're becoming a diversified platform business. Uber Eats, for example, is the most used food delivery service in the United States. And Uber Eats is developing partnerships with supermarkets in France like Carrefour and fast food giants in the UK, such as McDonald's. However, other, other platform businesses, Booking.com, Airbnb, they have seen their sales decline. So the rise of platforms is not inexorable, it's not inevitable, especially when there's a big economic shock. Now finally, this, <clears throat> this is an important question which you may well come onto when you look at market structures. Uh, do platform businesses harm smaller enterprises? Now some economists are increasingly concerned about the apparently inexorable growth in the market power of these big scaled digital platform businesses. And indeed, they're saying the rise of the new monopolies. But there is a counter argument which says that these platform businesses can actually make smaller enterprises more resilient in the face of an unprecedented demand shock. In the UK, for example, many smaller restaurants have been able to log on to and use the Uber Eats or the Just Eat platforms to fulfil takeaway demand. And huge aggregation platforms such as Amazon Web Service, are definitely used every day by thousands of small businesses to sell their products and to operate efficiently and relatively cost-effectively their own e-commerce operations. The, uh, the annual revenue of Amazon Web Services is now $35 billion a year and rising. It's one of the most profitable parts of Amazon's business. So this has been a, a short video on platform businesses. These are businesses whose model means that they can scale very quickly and achieve significant power in their given markets. I think platform businesses are well worth being aware of as you continue your study of individual markets and sectors. And I hope that this short video provided a useful introduction.